I have a lot of creative energy and during the course of my life it's manifested in many different ways. Uh, as a kid I used to sculpt. My father was an artist so I learned how to draw at an early age. Uh, when I practiced chiropractic, after I'd gotten my English degree, I always wanted to be a chiropractor, I practiced chiropractic, so, I, so the creativity came through my hands. And, and it's hard to, to explain or describe, but it, it was an art to me, as much as it was a science. Uh, and when I, I hurt my wrist, I wasn't able to continue practicing, and I sold my practice and went back to writing. The creativity manifested itself through the written word. And, uh, and that creativity still comes through my hands and the keyboard. Uh, I don't think I could dictate a novel. It, it would use a different area of my brain. Uh, so the creativity still comes through my hands, much like it did when I was sculpting as a, as a kid. I happened upon an ad for the Maui Writers Conference. And I booked it, I went, I came prepared with writing samples, I bought uh, 15 minute consultations with the agents that were going to be at the conference that handled my genre, thriller. And uh, I sat down with this one agent in particular who I was very taken by, who spoke at the conference. And she started reading the manuscript pages. I brought, I think, 20 page sample. And all of a sudden she stops and reaches down to this big bag she had and she rummages through it and pulls out a red pen and she starts circling and Xing and checking and making marks all over the pages. And finally she turns the last page, she slams her pen down and she goes, that was amazing. I want to see the whole manuscript. And I you know, picked up my jaw from uh, three inches down and I said, okay. And uh, she said, overnight it to me and, uh, and consider yourself under development. And I overnighted her the manuscript, and within seven days I had a contract signed with my first agent. I don't write a twist just for the sake of writing a twist. I write a twist if the story lends itself to that, because you don't want it to be forced. At the same time, if you don't have a twist, it's got to end strong. You don't want it to end and then continue on and on for pages where it's kind of just a letdown. You want to finish, end it. And, and have that last period on the last page. So I, I don't look at it as manipulating the reader, I look at it as setting it up carefully in terms of structure so that what I want to accomplish in terms of the, the characters and the story, that it all comes together at the end and there's a resolution that is satisfactory. And I try to make sure that my characters are characters the reader cares about. So they keep turning the pages to find out what's going to happen next. And I try to make them real. With re My characters don't always make the right decisions, because we don't make the right decisions. We may be well-intentioned, so we make a decision and it turns out wrong. That's life. You know? So I want characters that, that don't always solve things and don't always think of the right answers. And sometimes they, they take actions they meant well but those actions set off a series of other reactions that end poorly. So uh, that's what we all do. That's what life's about. And I try to make the character real so the, character care, uh, so the reader cares about the character. I outline a lot. Uh, my outlines could be 60 pages long. Uh, so when you're writing a 60 page outline, I don't break it in, it's not a chapter outline. It's a blow-by-blow a blow outline. So this happens, then this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and then you, know, you get to the end. The challenge for me, two challenges. One is finishing my outline before I start to write, because I get so excited about the story that I want to start writing. And I start seeing the scenes in my head, and sometimes in the course of my outline, I'm actually writing the novel, because I'm, I just get so excited about it, and I'm seeing the scene, so I just I start writing the novel. Um, and then I force myself to finish the outline. But I always know the ending before I start writing. Because I have to, because everything that happens in the book builds from the beginning to the ending. I don't usually have writer's block when I'm writing. I have writer's block when I'm outlining. <laughs> Not because I don't know where I want to go, but my challenge is that I have so many ideas 
and I'm, I'm pretty obsessive about writing down my ideas when I have them. So I end up with all these ideas and then I have to sit down and, and bring it all together. And that for me is the challenge. I'll hit this point where I just, I, I'm almost hamstrung, where I have so much information and ideas and I have to s step back and say, okay, how am I gonna put this all together? And it usually happens while I'm working out. That's where I get the, the creativity. Uh, if, I don't know if it's the endorphins. I don't know if it's the fact that my mind clears when I'm working out, but I, I am at my most creative at that point. And I've learned to keep a pen and pad uh, <laughs> right, right where I'm working out. Persistence. Uh, if you feel that you have the talent, and sometimes that's hard to gauge, but if you know that you have the talent, believe in yourself and work hard and don't give up. No matter what people tell you, oh, you can't do this, you'll never make a living, you can't write, you can't publish books, they're not buying, but stay focused on your goal. Do the work necessary to learn the business and craft of writing. Make yourself the best writer that you can possibly be. But above all else, be persistent because nobody is going to believe in you as much as you're going to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm.